Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, one user experience trick that you can use to make your apps and your projects more user friendly. This is especially true for mobile uh, projects that will be used on mobile devices. You don't have as much width uh, as you do. Um, you usually don't scroll to the side, you scroll up and down. So this trick will make, make it easier for your users to navigate between the different sections of your views. Um, I picked up this trick in the forums a few weeks ago. I saw it in the forums and I started using it in my projects because I wondered if it was possible to do. Open up your designer and uh, we'll take a look at the sample project I have set up. I already have a view. In this case, this is uh, an example view. You'll already have probably a use case set up. Okay, so let me launch session. And I'll show you what it looks like in a session. So this should be mobile. So this may not be the best example. Uh, because it's a pretty small view, even scrolling lengthwise, there's not that much content. But if you can imagine um, like a database table row with 500 rows, uh, your table rows usually convert into some sort of card or something else. And uh, that can get pretty long and tedious to scroll back and forth to find what you're looking for. So I have these sections here like real time cards. I didn't finish building out this view. This is just an example. I just dragged on the default components. But so I want I wanted to show you what I have built so far. I have a markdown component here with my sections. There's KPIs. Real time is here. And then cards is at the bottom. And I want to show you what happens when I click KPIs. It goes to the KPIs. Real time goes to the real time section here. Well, not quite because I don't have enough content. And then cards goes to the bottom. Not quite because I, once again, I don't have content there. So the real behavior of the way you see it is if you click KPIs, since there's enough content below it, it'll fill uh, the rest of the view. So if you're wondering how to set this up, I can show you really quick. There are a few steps. So. Uh, the component you want to be navigated to on click, you want to go click on the component, make sure it's selected. So your label, or it can be your flex container, depending on how you set it up. And then go to your properties, go to meta, and then there's a property DOM ID. If you don't see this DOM ID, which you won't unless you already added it, hit add meta property. So let me actually remove this. And then you can see that I see if I hit add meta property, there's properties and then a DOM ID. I'll name this KPIs. This needs to be unique, so you can't use the same DOM ID for your components. And then, so let's save that once again and I'll show you where it appears. So let me go to my session. If I if I hover and click on this label here, you can see that there, there's my ID. This is the DOM ID. This is what it refers to. You're setting an ID on uh, your DOM component or your DOM element here. So that's what it refers to. That's very common to do, by the way, in traditional web development to get an element by its DOM ID. So that is the property here, DOM ID that we use. Uh, this component, as I said, is just a markdown component with, with some style. Well, actually, I don't even have style in here. It's a markdown component with a few anchors. Let me remove this, that way it's easier to see. Oh, with basically hyperlinks. And then I link to um, hashtag KPIs or pound sign real time, pound sign cards. And then these here refer to my DOM IDs. So you can go, you can double click and see that I do in fact have a DOM ID of KPIs. 
And then on this label, I have a DOM ID of real time. And then on the cards label, I have a DOM ID of cards. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show for this weekend or for this week. Uh, or actually for past for the last week since I didn't post anything ignition related so I want to show you one last thing um, you can also navigate to these different sections in your view on button click so for example let me drag on a button and then I'll, I'll show you the script you need to write to navigate to a certain section in your page in your view so let me drag on, oh, let me deep select my root container and then drag on a button. Um, it won't be visible because my shrink is set to zero. Okay, there's my button. I'm going to drag it to the top. Okay, um, I'll call this go to real go to KPIs. Obviously in this case, it's not that helpful because it's right underneath it. Or let's say go to real time. Again, this isn't the best example. I didn't want to spend that much time building it out because in your case, it's going to be different anyway. So margin um, 0px 10. So to use um, basically the anchors that you set up in your page and to navigate them from, a, from an event, you would just use a very simple script. Let's go to configure events on action performed, add a script, and then we say system.perspective.navigate. And then you add, you need to add this named um, parameter here and then your URL in this case in our case it would be real time or it could be KPIs or whatever else uh, whatever other DOM ID you want to navigate to on click so let's go ahead and save that okay and then when I hit go to real time it'll go to real time here like I said, it, it's not very, it's not a very useful example because I don't have enough content to fill, fill the space below it. So let me show you what I mean. If I add, let's see what a component that takes up a lot of room. X, Y table. And then set this one zero to shrink. There we go. So now if I save this and here, I'll show you what I was talking about. When you click this button now, you'll see that real time goes to the top. The last, last thing I want to show you is to improve your um, user experience even more. Uh, it may be helpful to create links back to the top. So. For example, you have your KPIs here and your real-time label here. It may be very helpful if you have your label and then a way to go back to the top. That way you can navigate from your table of contents to any of these um, anchors. And you can also, you don't have to scroll back up. You can also click a button from them and go back up to the top. So let's go ahead and do that. I already added a DOM ID to my label up, up, um, up on top. I just called it top. And I will show you an example of how you may want to do this. So I have a flex container, as you see here, it's set to flex direction row. Uh, and then, then I have my label with my style applied. Let me, so there's multiple ways I can do this. I can either add a button or I can ev even add another label. Or I'm just thinking of what what other way I can make it go to the top. I can even add an event on click. 
So on click, and then I can say script system.perspective.navigate URL equals top. Okay, let me save this and then we can see whether what we want to happen will happen. So we click KPIs and then we want to go back up to the table of contents and we click the label and we go back. So that, that makes your user experience a lot better uh, navigating between your different screens, um, the ability to jump between sections of content really easily. In my opinion, that's a way uh, that enhances your user experience. That's what I wanted to share. Uh, but that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the, in the comments or on Discord. But that is it for me for now. I'll have more content. Um, I'm working on a Docker video. So that'll go nicely with the GitHub video I posted. Uh, so that should be ready for this weekend, but no promises. But soon I'll have a video on Docker and Ignition and explaining how it works and what it does. But that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.